Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to Raw Knuckles Podcast. Please like, follow, and subscribe. Cool. Who's the yeah. funniest? Who's the funniest? Uh, on the team? Don't tell me. Is it, it, is it Weidman? <laughs> yeah, right. Or He's Caulfield? Like front uh, it's... I, I think I'll go Weidman. Right? Just, just, yeah, he's so funny. Everything that comes out of his mouth is... He is so quick with the tongue, isn't he? He's quick, too. Yeah. When I stepped on the ice, I never backed down, and I never stayed down. And I was vicious, and I was malicious, and I don't care. <laughs> Well, welcome to Raw Knuckles Podcast. And Tim and I, thanks for taking the time. Appreciate it. Um, listen, Halifax, I remember, you know, my first foray into pro hockey was uh, in Halifax, the second year of the Metro Center. Um, God, a lot of good hockey players come from there, right? Uh, Sid the Kid, McKinnon, um, Marshawn, uh, you and your bro. Um, what is it? What's in the water there? Is it the Northeast, the rugged Halifax? And what's the deal with the hockey in, in, in Halifax? Yeah, it's been pretty cool. Like we've, we've had so many good players come out of there. And um, I think for like, you know, my generation and, you know, seeing Crosby and then seeing McKinnon, um, you know, seeing all these guys like Marshan too come out of there. I think it gave, you know, all of us, a sense that we could kind of make it too. And, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool going home now and getting to skate with those guys too. It's, it's pretty special. And then, yeah, you know, like you said, me and my brother, you know, we have Shane Bowers, who was a first round pick, Drake Batherson now. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been pretty exciting for, for the Maritimes lately. Yeah. For who was sure. your team growing up? Who was your favorite, who what was your favorite team growing up? Uh, I was actually a Leafs fan, believe it or oh, not. We're yeah. done. Nux, we're done. Good episode. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've had a lot. It's funny. We, Whenever we have someone on, we find out that from the Habs and that they were a, a Leafs fan or someone else. Uh, we yeah. give it to them. But um, So you and your brother both played growing up in, in, in Halifax. And uh, I'm curious, you went the junior route. Morgan... Uh, went off to college. What? Mm -hmm. um, and not that you both have to do the same thing, but I'm just wondering why you ended up going the junior route and he ended up uh, at Cornell. Yeah, he. Uh, so Morgan was more of like a late bloomer, I'd say. Um, like he was undrafted his first year of eligibility into the queue. Played another year in midweek, got drafted, I think, fourth round by the Sea Dogs. Um, and yeah, he was just, he grew super late. He was pretty small and, you know, he's 6'4 now, but he kind of hit that growth spurt late and he was always really good in school. So he went to prep school for two years in Ontario. And I think that kind of just gave him more time to develop. And, um, and then, yeah, I did his four years at Cornell. And I think for my situation, I was just, um, I was drafted a little bit higher into the queue, um, you know, ended up going first round and, um, ended up going to Halifax, which was obviously my kind of at the top of my list and very fortunate that happened. But yeah, I think nowadays, you know, I, I don't think there's really a bad route to take. I think it really depends on the player and kind of what you're looking for. Um, you know, I was looking at the school option too, but I think with Halifax drafting me, you know, being home for getting to play for that team I grew up watching and um, I knew the Memorial Cup was come to Halifax for my 17 year old year. So um, yeah, I couldn't pass up on that. How about uh, mom and dad? Uh, did they have an impact on the decision you made to to go junior college where they saw your older brother go off to college? Were they like, think of college instead of junior or they just, they supported your decision? No, they were great. They were really just supportive. Um, yeah, I think, you know, whatever route I took, um, yeah, I think, you know, they for sure would have supported me anyway. But, um, yeah, I think at the same time, mom was happy to have me home for a couple more years. Right. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you get a chance to catch any, like, see any of his games at Cornell? Uh, yeah, I got up there for two games one year. I was hurt with the Mooseheads. 
and my parents went up. So I hopped on, I hopped in with them and they have, uh, they actually had Harvard at home, which is like a huge rivalry for them. And I think my brother's team was ranked first or second in the country this year. So it was, it was pretty cool to get down and see that atmosphere. And they got an old rink there at Cornell um, and just seeing the style of play and, Morgan had a great year that year, so it was it was exciting to get down were there. Were you thinking, cool. like, at that time, like, I know you were playing in the queue, but were you like, shit, I wish I would go this route, or did it matter? Uh, no, not really. I mean, it's tough because the year before, you know, we had the Memorial Cup at home and, um, you know, sold out every game, and my brother kind of got to see that. I think there was a part of me that when I went there and saw all the chants and, you know, all the stuff they do, it was pretty cool, but um, – you know, for me, the, that it doesn't compare to having the Memorial Cup in Halifax. So right. I, was, I was always pretty happy with my decision. Yeah, that's cool. And you stuck with it and you did well and end up getting drafted uh, by Colorado that first round. It's it's funny. Tim and I both the college route, right? And uh, it's funny, um, you know, I, I play with a lot of Canadian kids. They came down back when it wasn't really fashionable. It just kind of started. Um at Northeastern and, and, and we had quite a few Canadian kids come down, but, um, God, the college life, oh. man, it, it, listen, you missed out, Justin. You missed <laughs> well, out. he'll catch up now. He's uh, been yeah. playing in Montreal. Uh, it, it, it looks like, it, yeah, it looks like your decision played out pretty good for you. Yeah. But <laughs> you, you know, you end up getting drafted, um, uh, in the first round by Colorado. And what was your draft day like? How cool was that? And where was the draft that year? So it was supposed to be in Montreal, but it was that cold oh, yeah. year. Oh, that's yeah. right. I was Suck. actually at home for it. Yeah, it was It was in October. Um, and yeah, I was at home. It was just me and my parents because my brother was already uh, at school, I think, at that point or in New York after he signed. And um, yeah, it was kind of a crazy day, like, you know, I had the laptop set up in front of me with like the live camera for TV. And there, I remember there was a dress rehearsal on Zoom that morning. Um, and we were kind of right in the middle of Moosehead's training camp. So I was on the ice, I think, and at the rink all day and then went home. And um, yeah, I was just in my basement with mom and dad and got to watch it on TV and and then go celebrate with some friends after. So it, it was obviously a little disappointing. I think everyone, you know, dreams of going up on stage and getting the Jersey and all that. But at the same time, it was still, still pretty exciting. Justin, don't feel so bad. My draft year, I found out. There was out no dress it, rehearsal for his draft. <laughs> I found out at the cask and flagon, which was a college bar. Someone mm -hmm. saw it on TV and told me, and then I got a letter from the Canadians a month later, inviting me to training camp. That was it. No one called me. Nothing. I got a letter. So uh, that ain't so bad. Um, so drafted by Colorado, your first camp, um, you, you end up um, going down to the Eagles and playing with them. How, did you play a couple games your first year? Was that it? And then yeah, you I went played, down, right? Yeah, I played uh, I played two games like kind of right before Christmas. And then other than that, I was with the Eagles the whole season. So you went to the Eagles. Was was Greg Cronin coaching then? Crow? Yeah, he was. How'd you like Crow? Now, I love Crow. I'm good friends with him. But yeah. how, how'd you like him as a coach? He was great. Um, he's definitely intense. Um, you know, he was pretty hard on me and uh, some of the other young guys. But I really appreciated looking back now having him. And, um, yeah, just a, just a great motivator and – you know, he really got me to see, you know, some of the areas that I needed to improve on, which for me was my defensive game and being harder to play against. Um, so, yeah, I, I like Crow. He was, uh, yeah, he was a great coach. I enjoyed my time with him. Yeah, he, you know, um, he really, and I know him, he really cares about the players. He, he cares about guys he, in, a, in a different way, not just what can I get out of you. He really wants you to you know, become a player. He wants you to be a good pro is what he does. And he, he's just awesome the way he goes about it. But anyway, that's good. You had him. So uh, the, the trade comes um, and <laughs> you end up coming to Montreal. Were you shocked? Were you like, why this happened? I mean, you, you know, you had a couple seasons there in, in with the Eagles and then um, 
21, 22, you end up coming to the Habs. How much yeah, of a you're shock still was a Leafs fan at this point. Yeah. <laughs> no. 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 Once, no. I, once I got with Colorado, I was, you know, definitely was not a Leafs fan anymore. Um, but, the, yeah, the trade was definitely surprising. Um, like, with how good Colorado was that year, you know, you would hear stuff about, you know, obviously everyone knew they were going to make moves. Um but for me, I didn't know really anything until the, probably the day before the trade deadline. I talked to my agent, uh, and he let me know that there was a chance I was going to get moved and if it was probably going to be to Montreal if it happened. And, yeah, then the next day it was halfway through practice in Colorado, got called off the ice, got the call that I was traded, and then um, gone to Montreal the next day. So it all happened super fast. Now, so you come to Montreal – and um you you were um here for what five you played five games that year yeah uh, the first year and then you watch your former team rip through the playoffs <laughs> and end up winning the Stanley Cup how how like did it kind of hurt seeing that not really honestly i think with my situation, like I was in the AHL all year, like I wasn't really a part of the avalanche team. I wasn't getting a ring, you know? So like I had some great friends on that team, like Nui and um, who's obviously with us now and Bo Byram and, you know, McKinnon, I knew him at that point. I was really happy for all those guys, um, you know, to see them finally get over the hump and win. And I think for me, it was it's definitely exciting coming to Montreal um, you know, just being on a younger team with some more opportunity, like obviously that avalanche blue line is stacked. Um, so yeah, it was, it was, uh, I would say overall, I was more so really excited to be in Montreal. Was it, what was the difference of like the locker rooms coming in, like, like being a younger team in Montreal? Was it like quieter? Was it, you know, not as a, the veteran status, you know, is not the same. Right. So what was your take when you first walked in? Yeah, I, I wasn't really sure what to expect. Like, you know, that was a tough year for Montreal before Christmas and kind of into that new year. Uh, and there was a lot of older guys, and then they started getting moved. And I think I I was, I was, got traded a couple weeks after Marty came in, and I could, like, kind of tell right away how the guys really had bought into what Marty was trying to do. Um, and it seemed like the culture was in pretty good shape. And, yeah, it, it was better than what I was expecting with how – poorly of a year Montreal was having. Um, but yeah, it was nice. It was fun coming in with all the young guys. And then, you know, we still have a mix of some really good veterans. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a very accepting locker room and, um, you know, everyone made me feel very welcome. Yeah. Well, we hear lots of good things about Marty and everybody we talked to his message. Um, everybody seems to like, um, what, um, so that first year you come to training camp, 22, 23, um, you end up going to Laval. Do you feel like you were ready for camp or they just didn't think you were ready to crack the lineup here? Uh, I felt like I was ready for camp. Um, like looking back, I don't think I had a very good camp myself. Um, you know, just, I don't know if it was the nerves or, you know, what it really was, but like, I think I just didn't had some games that weren't great. Um, and at the same time, I, I do think there was areas in my game that I needed to work on and, you know, kind of what management and the coaches saw. Um, so I think, you know, in a way, I think it's a blessing in disguise, you know, going down to Laval for that first half and getting to play, you know, power play, penalty kill, all situations and playing a lot and kind of work on those things. And I think that kind of helped me have more success when I did get called up in the second half of the season. Yeah, you had good numbers, no question, down there, 16 points in 25 games, uh, and then get called up to the big team, and you play well up here too. Now, you come into training camp this year, and certainly um, just seems like Montreal all of a sudden has so many defensemen. I mean, it's incredible when you look at the number of guys they have in young guys, a couple of older guys, there's no question, but how difficult is that? You come into camp, you're looking at it. There's two, four, six, eight guys that 
man, I'm vying for that job. I want to be in that top six. Come open a night. Come open a night. You're not in the lineup. Was it a little deflating for you? Were you, you you thinking you were going to be in there, or uh, was the writing on the wall early? Um, I mean, obviously, my goal was to be in the starting lineup opening night. Um, but like, I, honestly, I was really happy with my camp. I thought I made some good strides last year, and I felt more confident on the ice about my game. Um, and yeah, I think for me now, it's you know, I stuck up at a camp and. Um, yeah, just waiting for my opportunity to get in the lineup and, you know, continue to be patient and work on things in practice. And then, you know, once I get into the lineup, it's kind of up to me at that point to, to do what I can, um, you know, to stay in the lineup. So, why? Well, yeah, no, that's a great attitude because yeah. I played in, uh, when I, when I was in Winnipeg, I said, the only time I cheered for the Habs was <laughs> when I didn't play opening night in Winnipeg and they, we lost five to one. It was awesome. So no, I'm just kidding. But it, you're right. It's a good attitude. Just wait for your opportunity. That same thing happened with me. It was like the first few games, four or five games, I just wasn't dressing. But, like, maybe the only shitty thing was bag skating after and doing all that. But, you know, yeah. having that mindset of just waiting, you know how it works. I mean, injuries, anything. So it's yeah. definitely a great attitude to have. Yeah, yeah, something will open up for you. And you did have a good training camp, no question about it. I watched the games, and uh, you played well. So hopefully uh, you're going to – you stay on that path and you're going to eventually get your break and uh, someone will get injured. If, any, if last year's an indication, you're going to get in the lineup at some point. There's no question because, yeah. uh, God, the injuries last year was incredible, this team, the amount of injuries. Um, how about <laughs> coming here? And it's awesome because a lot of people get traded here and they're like, oh, I'm coming to Montreal. But – you took French, you're bilingual. You took French in school, right? Yeah. yeah. Have you found that? Uh, did you, you you surprise any of the media or the people in the organization when you were able to understand French or speak a little French? Yeah, I remember my the first day I got traded here, my first practice, I had media, I think, after practice that day. And, like, this was – I didn't know anybody in the organization when I got traded here, so I was meeting, you know, Chantel and – everyone with the media team. And one of the first things they asked me was, do you speak French? And I was like, well, yeah, like I took it in school. And I remember they were like, you got to like talk a couple sentences in French or answer a question in French. Like the Montreal media will love it. Um, so I think I got up there and answered my first two questions in French and everyone was definitely a little bit surprised. Right. Um, they were in shock probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's, it's definitely nice knowing now. I never really thought I was going to use it after you know, high school, but, um, yeah, thankful my parents put me in it. And it's, right. it's definitely been helpful living here. I took French in high school and like, I learned pronunciation and stuff like that and some words. So when I came here, I, I couldn't speak it, but you were an immersion. I, they didn't have immersion where I was in Boston, but that's the same thought I had. I'm like, I'm never going to use this. You know, I'm never going to use French. I end up in Montreal, but, um, <laughs> you know, that is a good thing. If you're like me and you're going to play some golf this summer, you have to check out this hidden gem. Windmill Heights sits atop the beautiful hills in Notre Dame de Old Perot. They have affordable rates and they offer customized membership opportunities for all levels. If you want to book a tee time, call 514-453-7177. Hit them straight. If you love your pet like I love my St. Bernard Adele, You'll want to feed them a balanced, biologically appropriate raw diet. The reason I've chosen Formula Raw is because all blends of their food are locally sourced and they consist of exclusively human-grade meat and organs, as well as fruits and vegetables. And all products used are hormone and antibiotic-free. So like I said, if you love your pet like I love Adele, you choose Formula Raw. Make sure you go to FormulaRaw.com and use the promo code RAWNUX at checkout to receive 10% off your first order. That's RAWNUX, R-A-W-K-N-U-X. So did you ever, your brother Morgan plays older than you, obviously, but did you ever got guys play together on a team when you were younger? No, we were, were three years apart, so he was yeah. always 
yeah, one year too old for me to, to play play with him. Where does he spend his summer? Does he go back where you're at in the summer? Yeah, we both go back to Halifax for the summers. So watching that um, playoff last year with your brother in there when he got the skate in the face, like mm -hmm. how, how many stitches did he get? It was around 70-something. I don't know what the exact number was, yeah. Man, that was, uh, he, you know, he got that push from behind from Stevenson. You know, he yeah. mushed him, and then the skate come up right at the right time. Did you, were you watching that live? Uh, uh, yeah, it was, yeah, I remember I was I was at home watching. Your mother the must have been beside herself, right? Your yeah, mother. she was actually, I remember she was away visiting some family um, out west, and so it was just me and my dad at home watching it. And then as soon as it happened, she called. And yeah, it was, I, I don't think we really knew how bad it was, yeah. you know, to begin with, because he went right off the ice and he was kind of just holding his face. Um, and then the replays, you know, were pretty gross. Um, and then, yeah, they said, I remember they said something on the broadcast about 70 something stitches. And then we were like, you know, kind of in shock still. And then, uh, he ended up texting my parents and just letting letting them know he was okay and he was coming back for the you know to play the third period. So I know. I think that, which, that was which nice. made me look tough for playing hockey, <laughs> right? Like that was awesome. It was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. So I think it kind of put my parents at ease a little bit, and uh, yeah, I think you know we were just at that point happy he was okay and um, yeah excited for him to be able to go back and keep playing. So, he's got a pretty na has he got a pretty nasty scar now or yeah i think i think i'm kind of used to seeing it now um but yeah it's he's got a pretty big scar there and it's been getting better over the summer he was doing you know he had some creams and stuff for it um but yeah it's definitely definitely noticeable still is it bad enough to keep the women away you think oh his <laughs> character i don't know he uh yeah, <laughs> He's had a girlfriend for a couple of years. So. Well, there you go. Then he's all set. You don't have to worry <laughs> about that. Good. Yeah. So, uh, and congratulations on last year um, getting named to the world championship team um, and and going over there and playing. Uh, how cool was that for you? Did, were you expecting it or was it a surprise? And then you get there and you guys, you, you ripped it up. It was awesome. Must have been a, a, a good confidence builder for you, you know, and multiple, yeah. right? Yeah, for sure. It was, yeah, it was a pretty big surprise for me. I didn't, uh, you know, you, you're not really thinking about it coming down to the end of the season. Um, and then, yeah, I think I got a call like five or six days after the season ended. And uh, I was thrilled to go, you know, I think anytime you get to wear the Team Canada jersey, it's pretty special. And I had heard all the stories about world championships, um, you know, on and off the ice, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a great experience. We had a real good team, like a good group of guys, um, good coaching staff, and you know, obviously, no better feeling than winning too. So, so did you know a lot of guys on the team, or just Mont, uh, Sam when you went, or did you know guys from like when you played the World Junior Championship and stuff like that? For Canada? Yeah, I knew a couple guys. Um, I think you know there was a couple guys from our World Junior team. Um, couple guys I knew from the playing against in the queue so yeah it was it was nice going in you know already knowing a couple of people and I had Andre Terrani twice um, for some international stuff so I knew some faces going in I was part of three of the off ice world championship teams for <laughs> sure it's, yeah. it's, it's crazy because like all the team where was it that where was it at uh, we were in Riga, Latvia. Oh man, it's a great yeah. city. Yeah, it was and awesome. I, we and it was crazy because like Nux, like all the other countries are like they've been together for like seven weeks, you know, and then we yeah. come in and just like meet on a plane, and it's just like <laughs> it's, it's it's crazy to just like go there, and then yeah, there's a lot of good times off the ice for sure. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was uh, we did five days in Budapest, Hungary, for like a little training camp, and then uh, right to Latvia, and then right into the tournament. So. It was nice getting a couple of days in a different city, get to know the guys a little bit and go out a little bit together. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, I, I wanted to play in the world championships, but I always made the playoffs that every team I was on, except for oh, one. Yeah. Now I'm going to sound like an asshole, right? Yeah, but yeah. Jesus, I, never, I never made playoffs. So. <laughs> I never, no, I missed the playoffs one year. 
and it was when I was with the Rangers. And I had played for Team USA in the Canada Cup and stuff like that a couple times. And the one time I was going to get an opportunity to go, it was in Sweden, in Stock, uh, Stockholm. And I hurt my knee down the stretch of the season. I tore a ligament in my knee. And the invite got kiboshed because I couldn't play. And I was dying to go and play and see what – I wanted to go to Sweden, right? Yeah, you wanted to see awesome. the girls. You wanted to see the girls. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I was married and kids. Come on, yeah, Tim. Yeah. What are you? <laughs> you sick bastard, you. Uh, so here in Montreal, now you young single guy, um, you live in downtown? Yeah, I'm in uh, Old Port. Yeah, oh, yeah, Old Port's nice, right? Everything right around there, a lot of restaurants, great, great spot. Um, how about uh, mom and dad, like dad, you, they come down and see you here in Montreal, come down and visit, stuff like that? Yeah, it's it's nice, like pretty close to, to Halifax. Um, I think they were up three or four times last year. Um, and yeah, they're coming up. We have Winnipeg here in, I think, two weeks. So my brother will be in town, so yeah. that will be the weekend up here. But I know they're excited for that game too. Um, and then, yeah, they'll make a couple trips up once the season gets going. And mom's retired now, so she's always looking to come up whenever she can and, and see did some Did they game. have a dad's or mom's trip? Did you have an experience? Uh, they did a mom's trip last year, but it was right after I got called up. Uh, so my mom wasn't there, but they have a dad's trip scheduled this, this year, I think in November. Um, I think we have a home game and then, uh, we go to Boston on a Saturday night. Oh, that'd be good. Cool was your dad a Leafs fan? Uh, yeah. So our whole like, house he comes in. on that with like his massive jersey. <laughs> like... <laughs> did he, uh, did your dad play hockey? Just, uh, just like, you know, midget and recreationally growing up and, um, uh, and he had a little bit of junior B as he got older. And then, uh, yeah, then just beer league after that. So is yeah. he ever like, well, so when I played, you guys are like, dad, you didn't fucking play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, so great. that world championship, and not that you haven't played in a big rink before, but how different and difficult was it for you to make that adjustment going from the small rink over to that international rink uh when you got got there did it make a difference in your game did it did you learn yeah, something over there 100 percent. it's it was just so much wider and there was a ton of space um in behind the nets like there was more space um so yeah i think just you know defending you know your gap it's obviously a little bit tougher because there's so much more room on the ice you got to favor the you know the middle of the ice a little bit more um, and then in the corners too, I think it's just reading times where, you know, you might not be able to go at guys as much and it might be a little bit more containing. Um, and then on the flip side, it's, it's great offensively, you know, you're not getting hit as much. You have a little bit more time with the puck. Um, so yeah, it was, it's definitely different and it's pretty tough to get used to. I think it took everyone, you know, a couple of games to really get used to it. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, definitely a fun change. Um, to get to play on that. Yeah, ice. it is different. I think the puck like here like just moves faster. Like yeah. the pucks, you know what I mean? There they're like I don't know, yeah, you hang on to it for a second. Sometimes it's almost like what the fuck do I do now? But Yeah, <laughs> I found sometimes I almost felt like I handcuffed myself because yeah, I was still yeah. used to making plays quicker. I ended up with the puck for so long like it's yeah, it's like you almost don't know what to do with it sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I I can't believe how the puck moves today, honestly. God. Not that it didn't back in the day, but uh, I know for me when I came up when I came up from the American League to the NHL it was that half step quicker. Everything happened so much faster, and I know the game is a lot faster today than when we played. But fuck, it was fast for me. I'm gonna tell you, yeah. you know, it was like, you know, everybody said, "Oh, it's fast." I can't imagine, you know, the speed and the tempo of the game. I mean, you gotta have that your head up. You, all the time be ready for pucks all the time just transition game everything so everything happens so much quicker over there's the no puck question probably moved way more like north south in your game 
Yeah. Like Nux, yeah. Nowadays they're like backhand sure. sauce, backwards diagonal to the, like, you know, the you know, it's so, it's so funny yeah. because when I first started, when I first got back here, but watching guys pass in their own end into their own slot to guys like that never happened back in the day. You'd be, your ass would be on the bench <laughs> if you did that. And it's like, yeah. now it's just such a, you know, it's an outlet for D men, you know, where back in the day it was like, if, you ever put it there, your ass on the bench. Instead yeah. of putting it there, you better put it around high in the glass. Even if you made a good play. Right? Yeah, like, yeah, you'd be fine. They're like, yeah. Oh, Crazy sorry. how things have changed. But so you said it, coming here to Montreal and having all the young guys that you do, you must have, must be a good feeling to know that there's a young nucleus here. You guys are going to grow together and – you're going to eventually work toward winning the Stanley Cup. How cool is that to be with a lot of a lot of young guys where you know you can grow together? Yeah, it's so exciting. Um, you know, even Nick feels like an old guy in the team, you know, but right? he's only a 99, 1999 <laughs> birthday, right? Um, but, uh, yeah, it's definitely exciting, you know, having that young group of guys. Um and yeah, it makes, I think our everyday lives more fun too. There's a lot of young guys, you know, always ready to go out and do something, grab dinner, you know, whatever it is. Um, and then, yeah, I think, you know, we have a great mix of rookies and vets too. Like our older guys here are all great. Um, and then, yeah, just, just looking into the future, obviously the goal is to win a Stanley cup here and it's, it's definitely exciting times. And, I think it's an important year for us to kind of take that next step and get into the playoffs or be, you know, playing meaningful games down the stretch. Um, but yeah, I, I really like the group we have and, you know, I feel pretty good about our lineup every night. So you come sure to camp. Best, make Go sure ahead, you're Tim. best friends with Arbor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, he's a beauty. He's yeah, a beauty. He's awesome. yeah. um, so, how about yourself? Do you have, like, you set personal goals for yourself? You know, you're coming in this year. You know, you set I some mean, I, goals. Yeah. Or... yeah, I think being, you know, I wanted to be with the NHL team out of camp. Um, you know, other than that, you know, I want to get a little bit of power play time, hopefully at some point. Like, I think that offensive side of my game is something I've always kind of have or have had, and I want to kind of keep building on that. Um, but also I think, you know, last year, the big focus of me going down to Laval was getting better defensively. And, um, yeah, I'd love to get into some more defensive situations this year, you know, maybe a little bit of, you know, five on six or penalty killing, that kind of thing. Yeah. And, you know, hopefully be able to gain some more, uh, more of the coaching staff's trust. Yeah. Keep working at that. And hopefully, uh, you're going to crack that lineup, get, get back in there soon and be able to. I'd love to see you be able to play against your brother. You, you think your brother will run your ass? Because he's a forward, right? <laughs> yeah, he's a forward. He's definitely a power forward. So. You're like, you college pussy. <laughs> Six. <laughs> like, yeah. <just> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, we got one game against each other there, I think, in April or um, March last year. And that was our first time playing against each other. But – the way it worked out, we didn't have many shifts together. It was pretty funny. Right. Would that be a dream, though, one day, maybe to play with him? Uh, yeah, to play with him would be pretty cool. Yeah. It's it's one thing playing against each other, but to be on the same team and be at the rink and stuff together every day would be pretty cool, too. Yeah, it would, right? Someday. Who knows? You never know. Like, so, who do your parents cheer for? In the, like, you know? <laughs> like, who they got to pick a side, no? Yeah, I think... I can't remember who wore what. I think my mom wore Montreal stuff last year, and my dad wore Winnipeg stuff. And then maybe we'll switch it up this year. Uh, yeah, they usually they try to represent both both brothers. Yeah, that's great. That's funny. I mean, think of the 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 brothers in the NHL back when we played. They had the Sutter brothers, right? The Islanders, St. Louis, uh, the Edmonton, or wherever. The Hunter brothers. There was three of them. One in one in St. Louis, uh, one in uh, Edmonton, and the other one in Quebec City, right? Then the, the Gretzky Hunters brothers, the right? all-time oh, yeah. yeah. leading scorer brothers, yeah. Brent Gretzky, yeah. had like four points to add to yeah. the 5,000 points. But <laughs> oh. 
Um, so I'm going to let have you play scout now. You're you're the scout. You're scouting you, and you got to write out the report. What's the report on Jeez. Justin Barron? Um, I would say smooth skating, uh, two way defenseman. Uh, likes to join the rush and help produce offensively, um, and good hockey IQ. That's awesome. Sounds like what's, sounds like the, the kid I've seen. Though? Is there any negatives? Uh, <laughs> he, could definitely, he could definitely be a little bit harder to play against. A little more sandpaper to his game, especially in the D zone. I love the honesty. Okay. Yeah, so do I. I was kind of. Kidding, he must have got that from Crow. <laughs> You Did Crow right ever myself? pull that one on you? Be honest. Uh, yeah, I mean, Crow never beats around the bush. You know that. Like yeah. he's, he <laughs> says it like it is, whether you like it or not. But I think, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's all part of his personality and his charm, kind of. But yeah, he uh, he definitely doesn't beat around the bush. Yeah, I know it sucks sitting out right now. But are you learning anything from why it's kind of different when you watch a couple games, isn't it? It is. It's a lot different, especially sitting up top. Like you see all the plays um, developing kind of before they happen. And yeah, I think for me, it's you, you kind of get to see stuff in games, um, see a different perspective that you don't necessarily see sitting on the bench. Um, and then, yeah, at the same time, I think our practices, the way Marty does them, we do a lot of game like drills, a lot of small area games. And I think that really helps, you know, for me right now is keep me sharp. And The rumor uh, is Marty still has it. Like he should be coaching with his equipment on. He's getting ready to I'm, I'm sure he could. He, uh, yeah, he's still in great shape. Um, his hands still look pretty good. His shot still looks good, you know. Uh, but, yeah, the, I think the way, just the way we practice it, it helps keep my mind sharp on the ice. And you're in lots of drills where you really have to think and make game, game situation plays. How about Marty? What are some of the, when you hear him speak, because every time, you know, we've had someone on, we said, how about Marty St. Louis, the coach? What what do you think of him? And they all said, God, the first time he ever come in and spoke, I've never heard a coach say anything like that. Like, like what is like some of the things, some Martyisms, if you will, like some of the things he preaches to players? Uh, it's just, uh, yeah, I don't know what it is. It's something about the way he talks. Like he, everyone is so focused and so dialed into what he's saying. Like he really commands the room. Um, and he's, I think just, he, everyone has so much respect for him for the way he played the game. Um, you know, the route he got to the NHL and everything, you know, all of his accomplishments, um, and then, yeah, I think, you know, just preaching how important it is. I think this year for us, it's a lot of details in our game that will help us, you know, have success. But he really preaches a lot of the small things like good changes, you know, blocking shots, almost kind of those non-negotiables that a lot of teams talk about. Um, yeah, he, he really preaches a lot of that stuff. Yeah, no, I, I would say, yeah, to have a coach that's been in your shoes, right? In all yeah. aspects, like because I like I'm playing for like Mike Keenan, I know he's like a winning coach, but like once in a while, I'll be like, dude, you were like a chemistry teacher, like you didn't, <laughs> like I could I couldn't get past that. Yeah, right? it seemed like Marty. It's like you can't. It seems like he speaks, uh, you know, honestly from like the point of view of the players, which is very valuable. I, I think it's great for sure. So, uh, Justin, say um, say I'm thinking about coming to Montreal as a player we're friends and I want to come there. How can you sell Montreal to me? Sell it to me. Like I mean, the, the team, the organization, the city, sell it to me. This is like, <laughs> a big, yeah, you better have a good answer. Here. <laughs> I, know. I think first of all, best fans in the league, best rank in the league. Um, you know, there's so much history here, and it means so much to wear that logo every night. Um, I think in regards to our team, like, obviously a young and up-and-coming up team. Um, you know, I think we do have a really bright future, and 
Um, we have a really good group of guys in the dressing room. Everyone gets along really well. Uh, it's very welcoming, very inviting. And um, I think, like, as going back to our coaching staff, we have great coaching. You know, four former players, um, which I do think makes a big difference. And, uh, yeah, I think, you know, we're really trending in the right direction. I was thinking cool. more, too. I'm hungry. Where am I going to so, eat? So that's, that's – well, <laughs> that's listen, I love that, Tim. That, yeah. That's good. Like, now that's a good starter for me. Now I'm thinking, like, how – yeah, how's the food in the city? What's the team supply the players with? I think I think some of our listeners would love to know this. And and what's the travel like? Yeah, we I mean we get treated super well at the rink. You know, game days we get breakfast, lunch, and post game meal. Um, every practice day we get breakfast and lunch. Um, and then yeah, for me, I'm me and Arbor, Slaff, we're going out to dinner pretty often here right now um there's what's so the favorite guys. spot yeah uh grinder's really good um fishbone's another one in old port we really like um cafe gentil there's there's so many good spots we try to mix it up a little bit um and then yeah on the travel the travel is always fun to get in the road, um, you know, especially for the older guys in the team with kids and stuff. You kind of get to see a little bit different side of them because they they're always home with their family and stuff when we're in Montreal. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the the road's always fun. You get out for a lot of team dinners. You get out with some different guys, and when you're at home, and um, yeah, it's pretty good. So we got the restaurants. That's pretty cool. How about for like after dinner drinks and di- you know? Yeah, what can, yeah. What kind of mood are you in, Nux? What kind of mood are you in? <laughs> Club scene. What do we got? We got a couple places. There's a we have a little pub in Old Port that we go to a lot after games. Um, yeah, we will. If there's just a couple of us, we'll still go sit there. Um, yeah, hang out after games and then. There's a there's a room upstairs we can kind of get sometimes too if we're looking to do a more entire team thing with all the girlfriends and players and stuff too. Cool. So I'm just gonna make the deduction here. I guess Slaff, you and Ava are the single guys. Uh, I have a girlfriend now actually. <laughs> okay. Uh, and Arbor has a girlfriend too, but Slaff is single. Okay, yeah. Slaff single. We gotta set him up, Slaff, with someone. <laughs> right, I gotta find. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure he can find someone on his own. But yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll have yeah. to screen them, Tim. <laughs> yeah. Are you a video game guy? Uh, no, I'm not actually. Oh. I. Uh, awesome. Yeah, I've never been much of a video game guy. Um, yeah, I guess maybe a movie guy or TV show guy. Um, Whatever yeah. Arbor's doing. Yeah. Guy. yeah, that kind of <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. How um, so the how about flights? Like your charter flights? How are the planes? Like are they Air Canada? They all uh, first class seats. Yeah, we're Air Canada. It's all first class seats. Um, the food's really good. I think they normally cater in food from different restaurants. Yeah, kind of depending on where we are. Um, but yeah, we have you have the same flight attendants. You all got great. your TV, same TV. You all got. Watch what you want, all the movies, what? The card yeah, games? Actually, card games? Yeah, so there's we got two card tables on there. Um, I'm hopefully looking to get on there at some point, but probably not in the next little while. It's mostly the older guys right now. Um, but, uh, yeah, I would love to be on the card table eventually. And I sit with Jakey Allen, uh, which is nice, kind of towards the back. He was like, Obviously, another maritime guy, but he really uh, kind of took me in when I got traded here, and he was super nice to me, and cool. you know, invited me right back to sit with him. So I've sat with him ever since, and uh, yeah, it's 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 a good setup. It's nice. Uh, we're very fortunate the way we get to travel nowadays. Do you have, do you all have your own room? Uh, do you have roommates on the road? No, right? No. Nope. Uh, so entry level contracts have roommates. Uh-huh. You know, once you're off your entry level, you. Uh, you get your own room. I think that's cool. At least they should, the entry level guys, I think that's awesome because I remember, you know, having a roommate was so cool on the road, you know, back in the day. I I loved it. 
you watch yeah. out for each other. Head, you know, it was I cool. love it too. Yeah. yeah. Me and uh, me and Slaff are together, and then Arbor and, and Ghouls are together. So it's yeah, it's it's always pretty fun. I played golf last year with Caden uh, uh, and um, and Nick over at uh, the golf course there, uh, Montreal and uh, Mount Royal, and uh, good guys. Like just you know, they're cool. I met Nick's dad, and they him. He was playing one day and he called me to see if I wanted to play and I did. But all the hockey guys are good guys in general anyway, right? You know, most hockey guys get the odd asshole. Did you have any young roommates, Nux? Like were you like the veteran guy? No, I, I, I um, <laughs> well, when I was in Montreal, Cabano was my roommate mostly, my sentiment. And then um, when I went to New York, I had Ron Greshner. His wife was Carol Alt, the top model there. So me and Gresh got pretty close, but and still are. And then when I got to Boston, they put me with uh, Craig Janney, but Vladimir Rajiska got traded uh, to the Bruins when I was there, and they ruined me with him, and he couldn't speak a word of English, the poor kid. <laughs> and I had to, you know, I had to kind of loosen him up a little teach them the ropes without being able to speak. It was like crazy, but I had fun doing it. It was a blast. Oh, and they did in New York to me too. I, Igor Lieber, he was a um, <clears throat> uh, Slovak and he couldn't speak a lick of English. And you know, no and yes, yeah. y- yes like and no. You just continue and... to talk in English to the person <laughs> when they don't know. It's but like they room me with him there too. Yeah. But we were only there. He was only there for like four months, and Phil Esposito wanted to trade him, and he traded him. And I think I told you this, Tim, but I'm in the room getting ready for a game, and they trade him before the game. He's going to L.A. So. Igor's, I had him over my house with his wife and the kids. You know, my my wife at the time, she couldn't speak any of that language. And we were like, we felt bad for them, but we had them over for dinner. They brought their kids. And anyway, Igor really liked me because I took him in. And Phil traded him right before a game to L.A. And Igor, um, he didn't want to go. So Phil came in the room. He said, Chris, I got Igor out here in the hall can you come out and tell him he has to go he get traded we trade him tell him he has to go translate to, LA. to him that he's out of here <laughs> yeah so i come up and i said ego ego you, you get traded you know you, you have to go to la you have to go to la you trade and phil goes ego ego you, you're traded you're gonna play with wayne gretzky you're gonna play with the best hockey player ever ego goes fuck gretzky me want to play with knuckles <laughs> and phil is like whoa fuck. What, what am i gonna do to get this kid on a plane and get him to la it was hilarious um but he ended up going but anyway um slap how about slap i mean isn't it crazy to see a kid that young and what he's been through already in life how is he adjusting to montreal i mean we had him on but you know from your point of view how huh? How's Slap doing? He's doing good. I think he's definitely, um, you know, becoming more independent. I know for me, like, I always forget just because he's so big. And, you know, he's already, you know, very mature. But I always forget how young he actually is. You know, I think he's an 04. Like, he was still 18 last year. Like, I almost always loop him in with, like, me and Arbor and Ghoul's age, you know, just because that's kind of the that we hang out with a little bit. But um yeah he's he's definitely coming along i'm i'm happy to see his he's had a good start to the season this year and um yeah he's just such a funny guy and uh you know always and always happy and um you know always a good guy to be around so who's your favorite teammate i know it's hard to pick one but uh god i don't even know how to answer that well um, yeah I like. I would say. I don't know the the young guys like our crew is kind of. I hang around a lot with Ghoul, Slaff, and Arbor. Um, like Newey's a guy that I knew growing up or growing up, 
and got to play a little bit with him before coming here, obviously in Colorado and had some other stuff. So knew he's probably the guy I've, I've known the longest and been friends yeah, with the longest. That's cool. Who's the funniest? Yeah. Who's the funniest? Uh, on the team? Don't tell me. Is it, it, is it Weidman? <laughs> yeah, right. Or he's Caulfield? Like front run. Uh, it's I, I think I'll go Weidman. Right? Just, he's, yeah, he's so funny. Everything that comes out of his mouth is. He is so it's, quick with the tongue, isn't he? He's quick too. Yeah. He yeah. he doesn't. Um, it comes it comes out right away. He doesn't even have to think that kid, huh? <laughs> yeah, it comes so natural to him. It's it's hilarious. Uh, oh man. Wow. So, yeah, that's good stuff. I'm so glad you're here. And um, listen, I want to um, thank you for coming on, Justin. One, two. Um, I hope you get your ass in the lineup soon. Just keep working your butt off and, and keep a good attitude. Just keep that good attitude no matter what happens. Um, that you you have control of. You don't have control of the rest of it. Yeah. But you have control of what you can do and how you act out in that ice. Always be positive and something's going to break for you soon and you're going to get your opportunity. And then make it hot on them to take you out. That's all. I yeah. wish you nothing but the best moving forward. All right, bud? Thank you. Yeah, I know. I appreciate it. And thanks for having me on today, guys. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to the Raw Knuckles podcast. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe.